You're listening to Tim Bulkley's 5-Minute Bible Reading the parable of the big feast in context One of the things we always have to do in trying to make sense of any text is to understand it in its context. Luke 14 provides a rather nice example of this in a couple of ways. It's one of Jesus' best-known and best-loved parables. Luke 14, beginning to read at verse 16, goes something like this. Then Jesus said to him, Someone gave a great dinner and invited many. At the time of the dinner he sent his slave to say to those who had been invited, Come, for everything is ready now. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said to him, I've bought a piece of land and I must go out and see it. Please accept my regrets. Another said, I've bought five yoke of oxen and I'm going to try them out. Please accept my regrets. Another said, I've just been married and therefore I cannot come. So the slave returned and reported this to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry and said to his slave, Go out at once into the streets and lanes of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind and the lame. And the slave said, Sir, what you ordered has been done and there's still room. The master said to the slave, Go out into the roads and lanes and compel people to come in so that my house may be filled, for I tell you none of those who were invited will taste my dinner. That's the story. So what does it mean? Well, first, in this case, and the order varies depending on which text you're dealing with, we need to work out some things about the cultural context. Because the cultural presuppositions of the people to whom Jesus told this story were somewhat different from ours. When I invite friends to a party, I just send them the one invitation, and they come at the specified time and date. Or, being typical Kiwis, they come on the specified date, but uh, fashionably later than the specified time. Things were a bit different in ancient Palestine. No one could be quite sure when the food would be ready for a party, and so, as well as sending a first invitation with the date, you would send a servant or a younger member of the household around the village to tell people when the food was nearly ready, so that they could arrive at the appropriate time. And that's what's going on here. That's what this second invitation is all about. But we also need to ask about other sorts of context for this passage. You see, the bit we began gives us a strong clue. Then Jesus said to him, verse 16, Someone gave a great dinner and invited many. Jesus said to who? What's going on here? We need to look back and to see the text in which this passage is embedded. And I'm going to suggest we go back to the beginning of the chapter. Again, how far you have to go back varies from case to case and depends on the passage you're studying but it's always a good idea to have a look around, even when the text doesn't demand it, like this one does. The chapter begins with Jesus at a party, a party in the house of one of the Pharisees. And there were a bunch of lawyers around, wanting to catch Jesus out, watching and waiting for him to fall into their trap. And he neatly reverses the trap. Is it lawful to cure people on the Sabbath or not? If you have a child or an ox that's fallen into a well, won't you pull them out on the Sabbath day? Oops! The lawyers can't answer. Then Jesus notices how the guests were busy choosing places of honour, and he suggests to them that it might be smarter to choose a more humble seat, just in case. If you choose the place of honour and then someone more important arrives, you're going to be in trouble. Can't you just feel the tension rising in the room as you read these verses? And then he says to the one who's invited him rather rudely, When you give a luncheon or dinner, don't invite your friends or brothers or your relatives or rich neighbours in case they may invite you in return and you'll be repaid. That was verse 12. Verse 13. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame and the blind, and then you'll be blessed because they cannot repay you for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. This was rather insulting to his host, who had invited him. And it's in that context that verse 15, the one before the passage we read, occurs. One of the dinner guests on hearing this said to him, Blessed is anyone who eats bread in the kingdom of God. Well, it's obvious what he's doing, isn't it? He's trying to defuse this rather tense situation that's developed between Jesus and his hosts. By saying something that everyone will agree with. Blessed is anyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. Well, you have to say amen to that, don't you? Whether you're the Pharisee who did the inviting, or Jesus, 
the awkward dinner guest and that's the context in which Jesus tells the story and that tells us what the story is about doesn't it <laughs>